Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'm Bob O'Hallon. I'm the director of the School of Hospitality and Leadership. And it's my pleasure this morning to introduce our speaker. I have a question first, so a show of hands, how many people have know what Free Boot Friday is? Actually, better than I thought. Good for you from that standpoint. This is a major event for the downtown on an annual basis that home football games, I'll let him explain the details or whatever, but this is something that uh, is basically part of what the downtown partnership does. And it's my pleasure to introduce, and I'm going to let him do most of the talking, uh, Kyle Parker, who is the executive director of the downtown uh, Greenville partnership. Let's welcome Kyle. Thanks, sir. Just want to reconfirm. Audio level's great. Y'all can hear me? Perfect. I know that's the biggest thing. I can yell. I've got a loud voice, but I don't want to blow anybody out. Um, but so again, good morning to everybody. Like I said, my name is Kyle Parker. I'm the executive director for the Downtown Greenville Partnership. And um, this morning I'm going to kind of talk to you about, we've recently gone under some major changes in the form of a rebrand of going from, we were formerly Uptown Greenville going back to now the Downtown Greenville Partnership and just talking about more of what, you know, the history of organization, what went into the decision to rebrand back to downtown, and what's the plan going forward now that we've launched this rebrand. Um, but before we get into that, just a little bit about me. Um, I'm not from Greenville originally, I'm not from North Carolina originally. I was born in Northeast Indiana, and I graduated in 2017 from Ball State University. Does anybody know where Ball State is? I got one, two, a couple of hands. Uh, David Letterman, look him up. He's our famous alumni. But I, so I graduated from, I graduated from Ball State in 2017 with sport management, and you're sitting here looking at, wait, how are you in nonprofit management? How are you leading an organization with sport management? I'm asking myself the same question. Um, but when uh, at Ball State, I met my now wife. Um, the fun quick story is we, we both went to Ball State, and we both looked at each other about a month before graduation and said, we're tired of the negative 40 degree winters. We're tired of the snow and the ice. We're moving. We're moving away from the Midwest. We're going wherever the first job takes us. So we spent the first four or five months after graduation just applying jobs all over the country. Um, and ECU is actually what brought us to Greenville. Um, so my wife had a got her first job in the office of uh, the uh, admissions office here at ECU, and that's what brought us to Greenville in 2017. Um, I started my career a little bit after. When we first moved here, I started with the Red Cross, you know, so kind of we snuck into the nonprofit. I was a blood, uh, I was a blood drive manager for the Red Cross, which means I went all over East North Carolina, and I begged you to please roll up your arm and donate blood. Um, after three years of that, I moved into the Boys and Girls Club, so, you know, I found my niche kind of in the nonprofit sector of giving back. Um, so, moving into the Boys and Girls Club, where I was doing a lot of the marketing and the events around our Boys and Girls Clubs here, um, in Pitt County and all of East North Carolina. And then last July, I found this opportunity to join what was then Uptown Greenville as the director of events. Um, and within two weeks of me joining Uptown Greenville, life was great, we were excited, we are getting excited for free boot in the fall and students being back. And my director gave her two week notice. Um, <laughs> So, and Robin and Chip, who are longtime volunteers of the organization, are sitting here laughing because they know the story of it. Um, but so within two weeks of joining the organization, I'm now asked to step into an interim role and really not only run the organization, but make sure the events go well and plan the events that, you know, I participated in as a citizen of Greenville, but have never seen the backside of it. Um, and if anybody remembers, you know, there were some good hand raised for Freeboot last year, the first game being Labor Day weekend against NC State in Greenville, and we brought in Uncle Cracker. Uh, so talk about a eye-opening experience of two weeks on the job, and now you're dealing with a national headlining tour, and you're looking at an event to have five, 6,000 people in it, where, you know, before my, my biggest event probably maybe had a couple hundred people participate. Um, but... We went through there, we got through the baptism by fire, we went and had a successful free boot and went into a great fall. And as we were finalizing the rebrand and getting ready to launch it, the board of directors, uh, it hired me to become the executive director. So once we, hired, we uh, launched this rebrand in July of 2023, it was also announced that I would be the executive director. Um, but like I said, so I've been in Greenville about seven years and you know, the plan was when we first moved here, hey, we get our roots set, but the plan was to move to Wellington, Raleigh, Charlotte, you know, to move to a bigger city. 
Um, but the more time that we've spent here and the, the friends we've gathered, the roots we've gone, we really don't see ourselves moving anywhere else other than Greenville. So with this, then that was kind of what in, um, you know, also inspired me to take this role as someone who has you know, grown to develop an interest in Greenville and wanting to make Greenville a better place. I saw this as an opportunity to do so. So I'm super excited here to talk about our downtown organization. Because a lot of people know of the events, know that happened, but really don't know the behind the scenes of what goes into it. And that's what we're going to be discussing today. Um, so rolling right into it, the history of our organization. Before we talk about our organization, I kind of wanted to talk about downtown in general. It's a broad term, and as you can kind of see, the, the term downtown really didn't start becoming a big thing until the end of the 19th century, the beginning of the 20th century, as you were seeing these urban centers start to pop up across the, um, you know, across the United States as well as Canada. Um, and you know, they, they used the term to describe the central business district, district for a city. And the reason downtown came, and it was interesting doing in, like research on it and learning more about it, it's interesting. They chose the name downtown off of um, New York City. You know, as they were building Manhattan, these, the central business hub was starting in lower Manhattan, and then the rest of the city grew around it and grew north. So that's where you hear a lot of, uh, a lot of times, if you're not talking about downtown, you're talking about uptown. This was all determined from Manhattan where you had Old Manhattan or downtown, and then as you continue to build onto the city and grow, um, you know that's where the uptown. You're going north. You're going uptown. Um, so that's where the basis of downtown, uptown, for all these names that you hear in, for, in reference to your central business district, that kind of all goes back to the late 1800s with New York City. But as you see here, you know the term downtown grew in such popularity as cities across the country and across uh, the western uh, the western half of the world really grew and take off it really didn't matter where your downtown was located it always referenced to downtown as i mentioned here you know downtown cleveland downtown is on the lake so there was nowhere for it to grow so everything grew south of it you know uh st louis everything is downtown was on the Mississippi River, you had nowhere to go to the west. Um, in downtown Pittsburgh, same deal with the way the rivers converge, there's nowhere to go other than east of downtown. And downtown Greenville is no different. If you think about it, you know, our central business district was built right off of, um, you know, right off of the Tar River, right there downtown, easy access to be able to get into the sound, get out to the ocean, as well as go up the river towards Raleigh. So you saw that central business district built off of those, that's, you know, those landmarks, like a river, like a lake, um, like that, and growing around it. So if you see, you know, in Greenville's sense, the central business district was built on the river, there was really nowhere for it to go other than south of where we're at now. Um, but this is also a picture of there's anybody here, does anybody remember the walking mall that was on Evans Street? So, if you guys can believe it, uh, Evans Street between 5th and 3rd all the way to the courthouse for the longest time was, was pedestrian only and was more of a walking mall. Um, and I bring this picture up to bring it because that's really what kicks our whole organization off. Um, so our organization was first created in 1983 and we were, our first business name was Evergreen and Greenville. This organization was created at that time where you were seeing, not just in Greenville, but across the country, you were seeing everybody leaving the central business district and going to the outskirts where strip malls, the bigger, you know, megaplex malls, a lot of you know, the landscape, the infrastructure was starting to be built outside of the central business district and it was becoming cheaper to be there um, and easier to be there with parking and things like that. So we were watching and here in Greenville as businesses were leaving this walking mall, leaving the central business district and going towards the strip malls, the, the big mall that we had, you know, that we were having uh, built around the city. So the organization was created with um, by downtown business owners, downtown stakeholders, as well as local legislation, in an effort to in an effort to bring business, bring attention, bring excitement back to the central business in, district in downtown in Greenville. Um, and the initial goal was to open the Evans Street walking mall back up to traffic to allow you know to kind of combat the whole 
well, I can go to the strip mall and park in a parking space. They want to be able to open up a traffic so you can pull, park in there, and make it more accessible for people to get into the businesses that were in downtown. Um, and they also developed a 20-point plan that was part of that, you know, that kind of built around the, um, around opening the plant, opening the walking mall back up. So it was interesting, we were doing this, you know, we did this for about 10 years, and we finally got the, the walking mall out, open up the traffic, um, and we're, the organization was excited. We accomplished our goal, what's next? And then we started seeing, in the, in late, the early to late 90s, the early 2000s, we were still having issues, and it, it was not just Greenville, North Carolina, it was across the country. You were having issues with vacancies all over across downtowns. You were dealing issues with security issues, with safety concerns. All of these, you know, all of these things were, were things that were negatively affecting not just downtown Greenville, but all of these downtowns across the country as well. Um, so as we were seeing, you know, we were talking about the vacancies were still high, crime rates were up. Um, just, you know, a lot of, it was, for a time, it was a scary place, it, it, and there's a negative connotation of going downtown. So, in terms of with a lot of other organizations, such as Evergreen and Greenville, we were seeing, you know, we were seeing these organizations take steps to, hey, to distance themselves from the negative words of downtown. Um, so, we adopted Uptown Greenville in 1994. Uh, kind of in step with what Charlotte did with the, you know, naming their downtown district uptown as well. And that was kind of the main push for it was like a, hey, this is an unsafe downtown. This is the fun new hip uptown um, where it's, you know, it's safe to do business. It's great to hang out there. And it worked for the most part. You know, we started, um, the plan was after they opened up the mall, like as you read, we wanted to promote the quality of culture, residential, and economic development in the central business district of Greenville. So we started advocating for economic development as, um, as a big pusher, because when we were doing that, there was nobody really that was, there was nobody at that time promoting economic development in downtown. So we became a, so, a driver to attra attract businesses to get them into seats, um, and you know, things like that, really being the cheerleader for the downtown district. We started hosting events in the district, such as uh, Free Boot Friday, as we talked about earlier, you know, the, the pep rally for ECU football games. We started hosting um, the Umbrella Market, which was a weekly market where we would bring artisans and farmers in to sell their wares, and, and also the Art Walk. We had a very large art, an art, um, a lot of art participants in the district. You know, we created these events to really shine light on that but also bring people to downtown you know and show hey we can have safe we have a safe fun time downtown bringing it there and they were really successful you know they continued to grow they continued to develop they became some of the biggest events in greenville um this wasn't mentioned but you know at the the centennial celebration of ecu we started doing pirate fest we worked with ecu to put that on and we've taken that uh, you know and we've taken that over since then we partnered with the city to put on the work put on it but it's just another event that happens downtown that really um, you know, showcases how great the community is and how great it is to be downtown. So as you know, as we're doing this, we're seeing occupancy rates start to grow up. You know, we really we worked hard with local government and the Greenville Police Department to really put a stop to a lot of the crime that was going on. You see your crime rate rates drop. You see your vacancies go. Your you see your occupancies go up. We built a lot of student housing around the district, so you see those, you know, those number of people increase. So you're bringing people into the district. We're doing a really great job, and then you start to see the public-private investments that really start to jump in and really grow. And life is great. You know, we're doing a really great job. There's a lot of excitement in downtown, and then before you know it, 2020 happens, and then the pandemic hits. So, the pandemic hits. We're not able, you know, businesses are having to close because of, you know, we're not being able to do events because of the, um, the what were we calling them? The, so, the guidelines, and, you know, the safety guidelines, <laughs> things like that. Businesses are having to close because of the same thing. So our organization really, we spent the time during COVID not being able to, you know, really operate and do what we need to do just because we couldn't. We sat there and thought, what are we gonna be post pandemic? Um, 
and you know that was this rebrand was three years in the making you know we launched it in july it was literally july of 2020 where our board of directors came together and really started discussing rebranding and what you know what's the plan post pandemic and it came out from this um we, you know, the board, the board of directors began the redevelopment of the organization. Um, in order to achieve its mission, we have, before the pandemic, our board had 36 board members on it. And if anybody's worked with the board, you know that's way too many people on a board. Uh, 36 different opinions. I mean, this is what our organization started finding. We couldn't really agree on what we needed to do, or we couldn't agree on anything. And there, you know, so it was really, it was apparent, it was really needed that the restructure of the organization needed to happen. So we went and we took us board and we switch, brought it from you know 36 board members, we dropped it down to 17. Um, and the qualifications on how to be, you know, how to participate, how to be a board of directors changed drastically to where now it's you have to be a stakeholder in downtown. And by stakeholder we need to mean a property owner, a business owner, or a you know a direct representative of an organization that helps the organization so the way our board is broken up now is we have eight we have eight members who fit into the business owners building owners developers um, and different kind of groups like that we have five seats that are taken up by our civic government so we have a city representative we have a city council representative we have uh, ECU Health and we have Convention of Visitors Bureau so we have those people who are directly affiliated with us or we work hand in hand to make sure we promote Greenville they're on the board we also have some advisory members we have an ECU we have somebody from the university we have uh, the, uh, somebody from SGA so we have you know everybody that sits on this board has a direct hand in making sure that our organization continues to grow that our or that the district continues to grow um, so like that and then that's you know, that was the mission that came out of it is like hey how does our organization help these businesses who have invested so much into the district how do we help them rebound post pandemic um and so that's what we created i just want to make yeah so our organization now goes to being an, you know being a nonprofit who is here to help better downtown by doing events and stuff we really took it in and made sure that we become a um, we become a members first, a stakeholder first organization. So everything that we do, we do it with the goal in mind to make sure that it helps stakeholders and helps businesses downtown to help it grow. Um, you know, as we're talking, like as Uptown Greenville, we're doing events, we're doing marketing, we're doing beautification, we're doing economic development. We were doing economic development at the time because there was not, there's no one really doing economic development on behalf of the downtown, you know, on behalf of downtown at that time. During the pandemic, we had the city has an economic development person. The county has an economic development person. The emergence of the ENC Alliance has done a really great job of economic development in Pitt County and East North Carolina and the district as well. So we also saw that as an opportunity to where, hey, instead of being the fourth or fifth person at the table trying to grab someone's attention to come down here, we got out of that. We wanted to focus on three uh, primary things. So our three priorities for the downtown Google partnership. The first one's beautification. You know, we believe that if we continue, if we continue to be a champion for the beautification efforts of the downtown district, we continue to make downtown a beautiful, a clean, a safe place to be. Businesses are going to want to come here. The businesses that are currently in there will continue to grow and develop and succeed, and we grow downtown that way. So, a lot of our priorities that we're doing on top of, you know, for the beautification efforts are. We're partnering with the city to do uh, landscaping. We worked with the city to have three designated public works staff who their only job is to come in and make sure that the streets are clean, the mulch is good, the flower boxes that we have planted are doing well. Um, just the, you know, the overall aesthetic, making sure it's nice. Uh, but we work with the city, like I said, we, we work with them to make that happen. Uh, as you can see, we have the banners, the, you know, providing nice, nice things on land post to kind of add some color to the district add some excitement and also being able to use that to market what's going on um, so we have a banner system we put in place the dedicated public work staff we're currently working on lighting four major alleyways that are in downtown that in the past have been um have been a lot of the un, uh, some unsafer areas in downtown 
We are working to do some archways and lighting designs to add to those alleyways that you see a lot of. Chapel Hill does a really good job of this, um, but we're taking that over too. And we're hoping within the next few weeks we will have our first alleyway lit. That's going to be the Hodges Alley that's between uh, Cotanch and Reed Circle. There it runs belong, uh, behind the buildings on 5th Street and still live. But that's our first lighting, that's our first alleyway project we're hoping to complete in the next few weeks. Then we're immediately turning our attention to the Merchant's Alley that runs between State Theater and Starlight and runs all the way from 5th Street to 4th Street. Um, a gum removal machine, if you guys have been downtown, you guys go down Cotanch, you see all the amount of gum that's just on those sidewalks. Uphill battle, but we, we partnered with the city to purchase a gum machine and a dedicated uh, staff person who it's their job to once or twice a week to just go and fight that battle of cleaning the gum off the sidewalks on Cotanch and the rest of downtown. Uh, here's a picture of me up here when we were testing out. I would say if you guys are looking for volunteer hours or just want to do something that's mindless, shut your mind off, go do it. It's amazing. You sit there, I mean, you just zap gum off, you put your, like, you put your earphones in, and before you know it, it's an hour and a half, two hours later. I mean, it's just really fun. Um, but you know, it's just a way that we're we're cleaning things up, um, and then the power washing of the sidewalks. We we hire somebody who comes in quarterly to just give a good power washing to a lot of the sidewalks. You know, to keep the debris, keep the gunk that you just from being outside, keep it clean, to make a nice presentable, um, a good presentable space. And as you see here, the flower boxes. That's something we've done over the past two years. Uh, we've added flower boxes all throughout the district, and we work with the city to make sure those are updated and replanted quarterly. Adding the fresh, you know, adding fresh flowers, colorful flowers, and it's a little tough doing it. We just um, at the beginning of the month we replanted for October, so it's a very similar box to what this looks like. But I mean, you know, a lot of like, a lot of good colors, and they hold that color throughout the majority of the time that they're in there until we replant in the spring. Um, some other things that aren't mentioned here that we're working, we're currently working on mural projects. Um, you know, ECU was a fantastic partner. The new mural that was put uh, on the side of the Reedy Building there in downtown, that's been years in the pro, you know, years in the works of our organization working with, you know, working with the university, discussing with the university on trying to add more public art. Um, so that's something we're always looking to do. You know, we're always identifying other spaces where we can add more public art to it. You know, just. Then that's kind of you know another thing that we are doing. Uh, we're working with a few other organizations in the city and Emerge and the Pitt County Arts Council. We're working with them to kind of fund some uplighting projects. We're hoping to get put some uplighting on the parking deck, city hall, and the municipal building, as well as the uh, the light tower that's in the Bright Speed parking lot. I don't know if you guys are driving. If you guys drive in Charles, if you drive over the uh, the 10th Street connector, you'll see that. But you know, we're looking and identifying some places to where we can, if we can add some uplighting to really kind of give that cool effect that you know, kind of like like brightens up downtown, um, but also makes it you know from a distance you can really see and it makes the district stand out. So those are beautification offices. The next thing is marketing. Um, we, you know, we, we've also come and hey, if we can use our platform to really promote businesses that are downtown and promote what's going on downtown and grow our following and you know, do that, get more awareness of downtown, bring more people downtown. Um, so last year we partnered with a, a downtown marketing firm um, and they've taken over our social media and we worked with them as well. Um, you know, we've, grown, we've grown our following just in the past year with them. We've grown, you know, to 16,000 followers on Facebook and 15.1 followers on Instagram. I, that's one of the coolest things of being a part of this organization for a year is just how well we've grown our social media following. I mean, as you see, we've grown, you know, two and a half, 2.6 thousand followers just from this time last year. Um, and we also created the business spotlight, and this is kind of what we've uh, we pushed up here. As you see, um, we've done it. We do it once a week, every month where we take a business that's downtown, we highlight them, we put them, we post them, and then we add some marketing dollars on top of it to really extend the reach of our platform to get, you know, to get people's names out there. Um, and as you see, we did the, with the Scullery, um, we did this earlier this year, but I mean, you know, 553 likes, and I believe our, um, we have like tens of thousands of impressions were on this post. So we're really, you know, we're taking that to be able to sit there to these businesses and say, hey, we're doing this to promote y'all, to get your name out there, to get you in places that other people may, you know, get you in front of a new audience to really grow and do that. This has been such a successful, um, a successful 
plan for us. I was looking at our numbers this morning. We've reached over 300, over the past year being with LMG, we've, um, we've reached over 300,000 people with our posts. Um, a lot of those coming from these business spotlights. So we're gonna continue to grow that and use this as a way to you know, help the businesses promote themselves and get out in front of a new audience. But as well as marketing, you know, we're always marketing our events, we're marketing everything that's going on downtown and partnering with those businesses who have their own events, we help promote and push out as well. Um, but you know, we're gonna continue to grow. If you guys do not follow us right now, I'll turn around here. So at the end, I've got our follow us. I'll turn around so there's gonna be no judgment if you don't follow us, but you can follow us really quickly. Just make sure you stay in the know. Um, but Downtown Greenville on Instagram, or Downtown Greenville on Instagram, and Downtown Greenville Partnership on Facebook. Like I said, I'll turn around at the end. Um, and then the last three, the last big component we have is the events. You know, as we discussed at the beginning, and we started at, hey, who's heard of Free Boot Friday? Um, Free Boot Friday is one of our biggest events along with uh, Pirate Fest. But, you know, we continue to strive to produce the best events uh, that bring feet to the streets of Downtown Greenville. We do that through Freeman Friday, Pirate Fest, and uh, Dickinson Avenue After Dark. Uh, our three biggest events that we host. But we also we partner with the city a lot to host events downtown, such as um, the New Year's Eve Emerald Drop, Greenville Grooves. Um, you know, we there's a lot of events that go on downtown, and we we don't necessarily have a hand in all of them, but we help in some capacity. Um, you know, and we've noticed that our event participation is up post pandemic. Um, this photo is from Uncle Cracker last fall. As you can see, I mean, two thirds of the uh, two thirds of five points is completely full, shoulder to shoulder with people. Did anybody go to uh, Sean Kingston Friday night? So those who were there, you can also say, I mean, it was it was not as big as Uncle Cracker, Cracker, but I mean, it was shoulder to shoulder Friday night. Um, you know, so that's what we're doing too. Is we're also looking to see how can we, you know, how can we, how who who what can we do? What can we bring in? to get the excitement out there to get more people on the streets. And we're finding that doing more things like this, bringing in the bigger named acts, are really bringing in and pushing, uh, bringing people in. So we're gonna continue to find opportunities to how do we partner with that. Um, and like we said, we look to continue to grow these events as well as add more events that bring people throughout the day, evening. You know, I know a lot of big things, we got pushed back about the umbrella market last year. Um, of all of our events, of all of our events, unfortunately, the umbrella market did not pick back up as is as the rest of these events did. So we had to, you know, we put a pause on it for this summer to really kind of look internally and what can we do to, what can we do to, you know, to facelift it, to bring it, to get more excitement back in there. We're hoping to next spring to implement a new uh, market that'll kind of take on, fill that, fa you know, fill that void. But I mean, that was, that was a big thing. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of people were kind of up in arms about it, but just not, you know, have been able to kind of say, hey, this is why we did it. After doing that, people kind of understand. But I mean, you know, it's we we're not here to take events away. We want to make sure that they continue to be successful and they continue to grow. Um, so we will do. And I know at the end of this, we'll have a Q and A. Um, and that's just I do this with every group. I just want to, you know, we'll talk about what y'all want to see, what we, you know, what we can think we can do. Um, so we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. So we talked about where we are or where we've been. <coughs> We're talking about where we're at now. What are we looking at going forward? What's the future of downtown Greenville? Um, this is a big thing, uh, really cool, that first point. So our organization in the past has done a state of the district report. We have not, or we have not done one since 2018. Uh, but at the 2018 state of the district, there was $560 million in either completed, ongoing, or proposed, uh, proposed infrastructure builds that were going on in the downtown district since 2010. Since 2018 of that last report, there's been an additional $260 million added to that list. So I mean, if you talk about that, you're almost $800 million in projects in the past 10 years. Um, and that's another big number that people really don't think about. You know, people say, uh, is Greenville growing? Are we doing it? I mean, I take it, I, I point to this number right here. It's, Greenville's growing quickly. Um, you know, as we, we continue to grow, and um, you know we're we're competing with a lot of these big cities in the state. As the state continues to grow, as you know other cities continue to grow, we're growing just as quickly with them. Um, you know, with that we have two hotels in the Hilton Garden Inn. Yeah, as you guys see, that one's currently going up. That's what we're hoping next summer we'll be doing that'll be up for business. 
as well as the, the fig one that is still in the planning pl process, but that's going to be an additional, the Hilton Garden Inn is like 102 rooms and the fig one I believe is either 70 or 80. So I mean, we're talking about adding almost 200 rooms to a city that is frankly is the, um, the number of hotel rooms does not fit up, fill up with demand. Uh, so being able to add those kind of helps lower the demand, but also, like I said, it's going to bring almost 200, you know, with 200 rooms, that's all. And if you think about it, that's almost 400 people who can be staying in the district on a daily basis uh, if it continues to stay full. So that's huge for us because that's going to get us a whole new group of people who may not have been in, you know, had not been downtown before, gets them in front and gets them in front of our businesses. Um, another big factor that happens in here is the intersect, in the intersect east and the ECU Millennial Campus that's going on there on 10th Street right before you get to the 10th Street connector. Absolutely huge. That's over, of the $260 million, that's almost $200 million of it is going to be, it's going to be a mixture of research, manufacturing, um, and I believe a little bit of additional office space there. Um, but that's going to be huge, bringing you know a lot of space for current and new businesses to be able to come in and be in the be in the heart of downtown, pretty much. Um, the Town Common bulkhead improvements. That's something. The bulkhead that's keeping Town Common um, out of the Tar River right now. That's at the end of its useful life. Uh, this you know the city the city of Greenville's done a really great job of putting a plan together. It is in the planning process of being able to add the you know add those improvements to it. To where once that new bulkhead comes in, uh, there's a plan for Town Common that's going to completely revamp Town Common, which is Greenville's one uh, downtown Greenville's one green space. So being able to put a new bulkhead on there is going to allow us to do so much more on Town Common and the area around it, um, and as well as the Fifth Street Build Grant. That's going to be a completely that's they've already started that, but that's a new uh, completely total resurfacing of Fifth Street and the, the landscaping of it, and that's going to go all the way from Memorial to Reed Circle. So downtown Green will, you know, our, our main street is gonna be get a complete new facelift and makeover. Um, so that's big. And it's just gonna, you know, it's gonna help to, be, it helps us with the continuing beautification, making it easier to get into downtown. Um, so, you know, you're gonna be seeing a lot of stuff coming up. Um, and I know for a lot of people, especially when this bill grant, bill grant comes through, it's gonna be, a lot of people are going to say, I can't get into downtown because of all the road construction. But, you know, it's a labor of love, and once we get through it, it's going to be so much easier. It's going to be so much quicker to get in and out of downtown. Um, the, like I said, I mean, it's just an exciting time to be downtown with the amount of growth, with the amount of events, with the amount of beautification efforts. It's just a great time to be down here, especially as an ECU student. With it being within you know a three minute walk, uh, you know I talk about Ball State, the downtown district from my university was a ten minute drive. To be able to walk down off the S the uh, you know walk out of West End, go down the hill, and you're in downtown Greenville. I mean it's such an awesome opportunity, especially have that many you know that many students to be right there on the district. That helps as well. Um, so that's where you know when we we're talking about the partnership, we always work hand in hand with the ECU uh, to be you know as as ECU succeeds, we succeed. As we succeed, ECU succeeds. Um, so as we continue to bring people in, we want to make sure that we're bringing people in and they want to stay here. I know that's a big thing that the city, us, Pitt County, ECU, all of these manufacturers, you know, everybody, all the big players, they come here and say, we have 30,000 people who come to ECU. How do we keep them here once we graduate? And we all work about, as a part of the team, you know, to be able to do that. So that's where I come in, you know, where I come in from it, is I want to make sure downtown is the greatest spot because as you, you know, you'll see and do research, a lot of, a lot of your young professionals, they want to live downtown, they want to be able to walk, you know, they want a walkable, they want a walkable lifestyle, they want to be able to go and get anything whenever they want. And you find a lot of that around the country, you find that in downtown. Um, you know, so as we're competing, as we're competing with Raleigh's, with Charlotte's, with Wilmington's, you know, we've got to keep that on our mind too. That they they're investing in their downtown, they're making it walkable, they're making it more livable. Um, so you know, it's from that standpoint, we're trying to do the same to be able to make sure we continue to compete and grow with everyone else. So with that, like I said, I just want you know connect here, my my phone number, my email address.
our social media like I said, I'm going to turn around for like three minutes. Well, not three minutes. I'm going to turn around for 30 seconds. If you're not following us now, like I said, just judgment free. Get your phones out. Follow us. Um, all of this information you can find on downtowngreenville.com too. Uh, that's a lot of money. You know, as we discussed, we've invested a lot of money in our website as well. The website's fully interactive. It has all of the merchants down there. You can find anything that you need. If whatever you're looking for downtown, downtowngreenville.com has it. Um, but with that, I just want to make sure we're running up over. No, you're good. Right on time. Who would have thought? I'm sitting here like, oh man, stressed. And I was like, oh, this is going to be like a 15 minute presentation. Going to be so, but really proud of myself for that. But so with that, I want to open it up to questions, uh, comments, concerns. And like I said, I'm here for feedback too. If there's things that y'all want to talk about or you guys want to see, let's go ahead. We'll start with you since you're first. Okay. Uh, so with all of this growth and development, my, I, I, I'm a little concerned about the keeping Greenville green part um, and who is on your team that is making sure that all these green spaces are making green uh, with, the, with the mass amount of development. Yeah, no, absolutely. So the question, for those who couldn't hear, the question was, with the amount of development and growth that's going on downtown, how do we hold on to the little bit of green space that we do have downtown? And that's one of my concerns, too. Um, you know, not just as, before I even took this job as a citizen, I was like, Dude, our downtown is a concrete jungle, and we're not a big city, so we shouldn't be a concrete jungle. Um, but no, that's where uh, we definitely, like, it's something we want to work on, and that's one of our three priorities with the beautification. Um, and so that's where you see like the additions of the, you know, the, the flower boxes, as well as with the build grant. The street landscape is a big part of that build grant as well. Um, so with the Fifth Street resurfacing, I know they do have some plans to make sure some more trees are added along Fifth Street, more you know, places like that. Um, but with Town Common, you know, being a big part, um, a big part of it, continuing to keep, you know, Town Common a green space. But there's also a lot of the plans and developments that are going on around it do have green spaces built into it. Um, you know, so that it's a big thing that we continue to look at. And as we continue to grow, and by, as we continue to grow as an organization, being able to help be a part of that to just make sure that it continues to be. But it's it's an absolute concern. Um, but that's what those are. Those are the small things that we have already committed to make sure that it continues. But as you know, as it continues to grow, it's always being mindful to make sure that it continues to have green space in it. Because the more we can add, the more beautiful it becomes, and it doesn't just turn into you know, like we said, a concrete jungle. So, question? Mm -hmm. Yes. What's up? So I work at a boutique downtown, and what we've noticed since switching back to having to pay the parking and use the passport app, not as many people are, we're not having as much of a flow of customers and just travel throughout downtown. And I know businesses are leaving the downtown, so what is going on in the works of trying to combat that issue? Yeah, so the question for those was, is a question that's been on everyone's mind since uh, June when it was rolled in, and it's the parking plan that's been involved in downtown. Um, and that was, that's a, that was a city decision, so our organization was not a part of it, but we've really kind of championed on the fact that, hey, it's not a parking issue, it's a parking challenge. And that's what Greenville's always, from what I've been told, Greenville's always had parking challenges. Um, and so that's what this parking, this parking plan came in to kind of help that challenge. Because what they were seeing is they were having students, you know, students overnight guests who were parking in this free parking and would leave their car there for 12, 30, 12 to 48 hours almost. And so they were having, we were having issues with the turnaround of being able to have parking available. And that was the first challenge that we had was like, hey, there's no parking downtown. But, if, you know, like we were saying, with people coming, parking, leaving their car there, the inventory was there. Um, but, you know, it kind of goes back to what I said with it being a big city. Um, you know, we are the big city for East North Carolina. Um, everybody from Elizabeth City all the way down to Jacksonville, they come to Greenville for, for, for what they need. And so, you know, all the other big cities have parking plans. Um, you know, and it ranges in prices and from our standpoint, our parking, our parking plan is one of the best plans and it's the most cost effective for the citizens. And I think that's what, you know, we're working with, we're working with the city now to make sure how do we market it? Because it was, you know, it was kind of, it was rolled out and it was like, okay, cool, here it is. 
So that's, you know, we're working with trying to make sure that the word continues to get out about how easy it is to do. And I understand, you know, a lot of people are kind of worried about the app. So being able to say, hey, there are paid kiosks there. You know, really hitting home that it is two hours free parking. Um, and then if you're parking in a parking lot, it's an additional 75 cents. Um, you know, I was, shoot, we we're talking about hometown. We were in my wife's hometown last week for a wedding. Um, and this town doesn't have more than 15,000 people that lives in it. They use passport parking, 75 cents an hour with no free parking. I mean, if you want to talk about being up, I was like, wait a second, I'm here. I, I literally, I parked for 10 minutes and I still paid 75 cents. So I think that's how we go about it is we just make sure we market it that, hey, it is two hours free. You can park, you know, you can park on the street for a dollar an hour after that two hours. You can park in the parking lot for 75 cents an hour. I think it's just a continued effort between, you know, between our organization, between merchants, between everybody, just really promoting the fact that, hey, it's not as bad as you think. It's super simple, um, and you can get like, you can get in and out without even paying. Um, yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's like I said, we're working to continue to make sure that we push and promote the promote it, just to let people know. I'll get. Okay. You want me to go again? Okay. Yeah. How are you planning on enveloping Dickinson Avenue now that you've done this rebrand? Because I felt like they were a little bit separate when you guys were up there. Right. And that's a big thing with it, too. And that's when I, you know, being as a private citizen and coming into this organization as well, is seeing that, you know, you have this and you have Dickinson Avenue. Um, and it's really trying to, you know, envelop and say, hey, we are one downtown. And I think a lot of that is just, I know previous leadership was pro Dickinson Avenue, but wasn't really sure how to tie it in. And that's where Premier is just making sure that we are sharing the same information. We're sharing the same information with them. We're doing more, you know, we're doing the same with them and really just tying it. I mean, that's the tough thing is having that parking lot there in the middle that kind of, you know, divides it into two sets. But really, like what I'm trying to do is making sure the events we do includes everybody. You know, the Dickinson Avenue crowd is getting the promotion, is getting the love. Because I mean, that's a lot of the feedback that I've been getting is like, a, hey, all the attention is here at, I mean, what they've called Center City instead of that. So just making sure that we, you know, we continue to equally promote, push, and get everybody on the same page. And I feel like for what, for right now, like we're doing an okay job at it, we can do a better job at it, and that's something I continue to want to do is making sure that everybody, you know, we spread the love evenly and everybody gets that one downtown just like the feel. But I'll get to the, yes sir. With all of your current completion development projects and your upcoming ones, how have you measured your success in those projects from a community feedback standpoint? Yeah, so that's where a lot of the state of the district report is, has been coming into effect and being able to get those surveys out and, fi um, and getting the feedback from the citizens from that standpoint. As we were saying, before I came on, we haven't done a State of the District since 2018. I actually appreciate you bringing that up, because now that we've launched this rebrand, it's my next big goal as Executive Director to get a strategic plan put together. Um, I'm currently in the, the, um, the fact-finding part of the strategic plan. I'm building a survey, which would be the first survey we've sent out since I think 2017, 2018. Uh, to really kind of get the, you know, to get feedback from externals, to be able to sit here and build that strategic plan around what people want to see as well as what as merchants, our organization, want to see. Because I mean, that's a big thing. You know, as we, as we continue to grow and develop, we want to make sure that we're developing with the right things. Um, you know, I'm reading, there's a lot of interesting re literature and a lot of interesting studies out there talking about current trends and, you know, what it's doing to downtown businesses. And I just want to make sure, you know, instead of trying to, as we, you know, as we build for three to five years down the future, I want to make sure that we are truly future focused instead of trying to catch up with what's cool right now. Um, so with that, you know, it goes into a lot of fact finding, a lot of research. Um, so that's what we're really starting to do now is develop those surveys and get the feedback from there. But that'll hopefully, with that, before Thanksgiving, I'm hoping to have it out to the public to be able to input on it. Um, so just be on the lookout for that as well. Yeah. I really tied in closely with mine. So I'm new here. I'm a Greenville native. My parents met in 1980 at the Attic downtown. Um, so just laughing. Um, but you are also like, you know, very uniquely districted right up against north of the river, which is one of the poorest districts that we have in Lake County. 
and right next to West Greenville where you have families that are one and four food insecure every week. So that was my question with the feedback that you're getting, you know, how do we become more inclusive in this space so that we're not just catering to the still life customers, no offense to anybody that goes to still life. Um, because you are in this unique space where you are going to create a very strong difference in how well lit this space is and two blocks down it's not. That was my question. Oh. The feedback parts, and also why purple and not green. <laughs> <laughs> so, look, to answer the first part, um, again, is yes, want to be able to get feedback from everybody, but also being, you know, being aware, being conscious of of the surrounding areas that are around us. Um, I completely agree with you. I think everybody has a voice. Everybody can have, you know, a say in what really goes into downtown. So that's why. Again, I want to work with our friends in West Greenville. I want to work with our friends north of the river to really make sure that we get this survey, get this information out there to get that feedback, to be able to go in there. But I completely agree with you. I believe downtown should be an inclusive place for everybody, no matter what, to be able to enjoy and spend time. Um, so with that, it takes everybody's input. So that's what we're working to try to make sure we get as much people, as, mu as many different voices as possible in far in with this research. Why purple, not green? Um, the way we looked at it, and it's kind of like you said, it's your surrounding partners. Um, you know, you have ECU here to the east of us. You have ECU Health here to the west of us. We, our board, sat there and looked at it. You know, and we took a lot from what Chancellor Rogers is what Chancellor Rogers said when he first came in of building and melding the community in ECU into one. Um, and so we wanted to, you know, we wanted to step into that and embrace that as well. And so what we saw, you know, and that was a lot of things, is when the original concept was purple and gold, and I looked and I said, we can't do purple and gold. So it's, you know, we can invest, like, we can, we can follow suit with a purple. The purple's a little bit brighter than what the ECU purple is, so it makes it a little bit different from it. Um, but you know the white also stands, and that was a tough thing too. If you do purple and gold, uh, purple and green, you start looking like Barney. Um, so I know a lot of people love him. It's just I didn't know if it was the best way. But I, you know, the purple and white was the, really the best way to, you know, to pay homage to ECU, especially with it being so close and having the influence in it, but being different enough to be able to broadcast it as well. I mean, and we've got. Um, We've got a whole uh, brand guide that has some different colors, and you'll see that as well. As we start, you know, as we start and we grow and we move from it, you'll start seeing a lot of those secondary and tertiary colors that are part of that brand guide being used and developed as well. Um, but yeah, for the organization standpoint, we just wanted to make sure that we, you know, we were like we were also doing kind of part to make sure we can meld the community and ECU together. Do you want to tell everybody about the selfie, and then we want to say thank you to you? Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, so the School of Hospitality has asked that we, if you guys are sitting up, and we can kind of congregate together. We'd love to take a selfie. We're all right uh, together. We're all right together right here. <laughs> Zachary? <laughs> Make that job really easy. Zachary? Yeah. Take charge of that. Hey, come on. <laughs> uh, so before we do that, does anybody else have any other questions? Um, if not, if you guys sit there and think about it, Y'all can catch me after the fact. Uh, for those who are catching it, if they're not here live, um, contact information is up on the screen. You can always shoot me an email or call the office. Um, but if there are no other questions at this time, yeah, we'd like to grab a selfie. So if you guys could just kind of 